countryside. Anybody who is watching on, uh, on Justin TV, please let me know when you want me to adjust anything so that we can do it very well. Because sometimes I don't know how I'm appearing on your own and Towards the window? Okay. Okay, thank you. I've done that. Good. Uh, let us all join hand and um, join our hands and join our hearts and begin to pray to thank God for giving us a beautiful, beautiful week that we've started. And then let us tell God, remember what God said during the, um, the battle prayer, the marathon prayer, that this is a week of testimonies. Tell God, include my name among those to give a big testimony this week. Tell God I want to receive testimonies. This is my week of testimonies. Come on, let's pray. I am waiting for my testimonies. I need my testimony and I am receiving testimonies. A lot of it this week. I can't wait for it. Father, we thank you for another beautiful day you've given to us. We worship you. We adore you. We take over this day. We've already had. It belongs to us. Nobody can take it away from us. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Every good thing that is in it, we take over. We look forward to much testimonies today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me read to you from Hebrew. Turn off the echo phone. Or oh, whoever is, um, is using um, an internet phone, internet uh, phone, please. Either you let us all mute our phones so that we can enjoy this. Now let me um, let me read Hebrew chapter one verse three. See what the word says. Who being the brightness? I like that. The brightness of his glory. Wow. Ooh, 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 ooh. When once I see such things, I don't pass anymore. I stop to just gaze at it. Have you ever been driving through a city? Or have you ever been driving through or walking through a street? And suddenly the sun came after you. It just shines out at that moment. And you are the first person to see the brilliancy of the sun. <laughs> or if you live near a mountain or a hill and you wake up early in the morning,
morning, you are standing outside your balcony or your house, and suddenly you see the sun rises towards the hill and then shines on top of the hill. And then you can see it reflects and then bounces on it and then pours out this beautiful, beautiful, glorious shining. And it just takes your breath away. And I, and I think that is what happened to Miss Gal when she first, for the first time, went from um, Alabama to, to Florida, where she lives now. And she saw this beautiful beach. And um, she watched the Pacific Ocean go by. And as she wakes up early in the morning and she sees this beautiful sunshine bouncing on the Pacific Ocean, on the tropical territory there. She's like, I'm, I'm not going back to Alabama. I'm staying right here. Miss Girl, is that what happened to you? Okay. Oh, no, I'm here. I had to unmute my phone. Yeah, when I was, um, when I was 13, I saw it for the first time. And it was at night. I was first full moon. And then I thought, and I thought, when I saw it the first time, I thought, I, I want to live here. I just want to live here. It was so peaceful and beautiful. And, and then in the morning, this is the prettiest thing in the world. And I never, I never wanted to leave. And I, was 40, I was almost 50 years old before I ever got to come live here. And wow. I just want to stay. I want to ask God to let me stay here. Mm -hmm. Make sure where I can stay here. I love it so much. I know. So beautiful. Good. I have seen some of the uh, some of the photos you've sent me of the city where you live. I, I think they are just so awesome. Please, if you live in a beautiful city and it is full of um, of scenic sites, do send me some of those yeah. pictures. Yeah, send me some of the pictures of the scenic sites of your cities. I love those things. They make me happy. She sent me. That's how I knew about. Uh, where she lives and how beautiful it is. She lives just by the Pacific Ocean, just just across the it's street. Gulf, it's, Gulf, it's actually the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, you live in the Gulf of Mexico? Yeah, the, the Emerald Coast is on, is on the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, okay, I see, I see, I see. That makes it's sense. That it's makes so sense. Pretty. That makes sense. And those of you who live by by hills, bluffs, and mountains. Like I used to live in Wisconsin and in Utah, I would love some of you to send me some nice pictures of what I'm talking about. You know, you see the sun coming out in the morning, you see the sun going back in the evening. It's, it's amazing. Or like when I fly through Denver, when once I am in Denver, in, um, where is it? In, uh, in, in, the, in, in, the, in um, Denver, Colorado. And I'm flying uh, from Denver to other parts of the world, or other, other cities. Oh my goodness. And you see the beauty of the, the ranges of mountains like forever. All the way to Utah. And then pushes all the way. It's like it pushes way into places like Wyoming. You see all, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. You will just know that the maker of the universe is a beautiful God. It's a beautiful God. And that's what Paul was telling us to dwell on those things. Now, this morning, something is being described. Is, is being described in terms of magnificent beauty about Jesus. I love beautiful things. And when I look at nature, the, the beauty of it just... It just blow my mind away. This is what verse 3 is saying. This is talking about Jesus. Uh, verse 2 talks about how uh, he created many, many walls 
not just this earth in which, in which we live, he created many, many, many planets. That it was Jesus who was creating. So the person you're reading about in Genesis 1 who is saying, let there be this, let there be that, let there be this, is the voice of Jesus you're hearing. That is the voice that you are hearing. The Chimera Ministries. Yes, Green Edda, we are on a conference. Call me back, call me back in one hour's time. Is everything all right in Green Edda? Okay, I'll hear about it later. Bye-bye. Okay, now listen to what happens here in verse 3. It's now from verse 3 down, you are going to hear some strange descriptions of Jesus. The gospel gave us in snapshots. The Old Testament gives to us in snapshots things about the Holy Spirit, about the Father, and about Jesus, about the creatures of heaven. There are different, different kinds of people. I will, I will not call it, I will call it personalities, entities in heaven. I'm telling you, there are some creatures that are just living creatures. We don't know what they are. So if you think all you're going to see in heaven are just angels, and God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the sons, and all those righteous people here up there, you are bound for a thrill of your life because you are going to see different kinds of entities, personalities. For example, do you know that there are angels that can be uh, as big as 10 human beings? One angel. They are angels that could be up to about 15 feet tall. Yep. That is, 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 is crazy. Please everyone unmute your phone so that when we, when we, this is Bible study here in the morning. And also, I incorporate prayer into it. Please unmute your phone. But if you know your phone has trouble, mute it. And now, you see, the Bible has snapshots. It tells us in bits and pieces about God, about Jesus. There's a lot of secrecy if you do not have the Spirit of God. Then you cannot really see who is doing what. Where is God the Father speaking or talking or acting? Where is God the Son speaking, acting or talking? Where is God the, uh, the, 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 the Son, Jesus, in action? Sometimes it's three of them in action. Sometimes it's just one of them. Sometimes it's both of them. Like in Genesis, from verse 2 downward, is the Holy Spirit and Jesus in action, at work. And it's only when you enter the Acts of the Apostles, which is a history, of the work, how the Holy Spirit began his work with the church. It's only when you enter to the Act of the Apostles, and then you cross this, and then you begin to enter the writings of Paul, that you begin to see that it is true revelation, revealed truth, true, strong relationship with Jesus. That real amazing understanding of who he is, who we are, begins to be to be explained. The epistles are explanations of who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, and who we are. The, the, the epistles are explanations. They are not just red letters written to churches. Grenada. Welcome, Grenada. They are explanations. The explanations. Somebody is explaining. It's inspiring somebody to begin to explain. Just like in today's world, 
I'm being used by God to explain the scriptures. Here in the in the uh, 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 epistle to the Hebrews, which is written by Paul. I remember when a lot of theologians were quarreling over who wrote the epistle to the Hebrews. My my father in the Lord went straight to Jesus and said, who wrote this book? Tell me. And Jesus said, it is Paul that wrote it. Paul wrote this book. And whenever you read it, you know this sound like him. This is him. Now, Paul is explaining in the letters to the Hebrews something about Jesus. Something about us. That is why when you believe these writings, the gospel will work for you. The Bible will work for you. Look at what he's saying about Jesus. Who, being the brightness of his glory, who is Jesus' is, who is Jesus representing here? Who is Jesus? Like his brightness of his glory. Who? The Father. The Father. In one way or the other, there is somebody whose spirit you're going to become. And that is why it's very good for us to emulate good people. great achievers in life. People who have seen the Lord. People who carries anointing for for miracles, signs, wonders. Or at least carries an anointing for caring and loving. You will always be one way or the other, like your father or like your mother. Or if they, if they are not whom you want to emulate, you will then, one way or the other, copy somebody. There's somebody that you're going to be like. And then you will incorporate a little bit of that person to make yourself very unique. That will bring you out. You will become, what I normally say is, you will take the best of someone you were, you are supposed to be like. His spirit will become part of you. And then your real self and personality and your own gift will mix with that. And that makes you even more powerful. For example, Elijah left his spirit double portion of his spirit, not all of his spirit, double portion of it, in Elisha. And that mixes with Elisha's spirit. And Elisha did more miracles than Elijah. That is why in my ministry, I will do more miracles than those who came before me. It's always it's supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be in one generation, one person did a great task and there is nobody else after him. What 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 did you say? Girl, were you were you trying to say something? Spirit, 
so that you can be more like him. You can never be more like Jesus without being with him on a daily basis or without being with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis or being with the Father on a daily basis. You can be like him. See what he says. Who being the brightness of the Father's glory. I tell people, I say, we talk about light. But you have no idea that there is something from where the light shines from. The shining of God is actually called brightness. And out of that brightness, out of that brightness, you see glory. The Bible says God is light because that is what pours out of him. But where does this pouring come out of? Where does this shining come out of? There is something inside God that is called brightness. That is so huge. That is so powerful. That is so magnificent. It is so, he says, he is the brightness of God's glory. He talks about the glory. The glory that pours out of the light. You can explain it both ways, it doesn't matter. Either brightness pours out of the light or the light pours out of the brightness, it doesn't matter. When, when you see Jesus, you see the brightness of the magnificence of God. You see the brightness of the power of God. You see, you see the, 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 the beauty, the unlimited access of shining. And this is what we are finding this morning. Your own shining, yours, 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 I'm talking to you. Your shining must be unlimited. Your shining should not be while we are having a marathon battle prayer conference or other conferences. Like we will have one next month. It should not just be that time. It should not just be when we gather. It should not just be when a miracle for good thing has happened. Your shining, your brightness, your light, your star, your shining must be constant. Because at any time your shining goes down, devils will appear. Because they love darkness. They love bitterness. And let me tell you what it says of Jesus. The brightness of the glory of God. So it tells you that the glory of God is the main thing we are talking about. It is out of the glory the unlimited shining
people will call me from Uzbekistan, from Kurdistan, to some Sustan. I'm like, where are those countries or nations? Jesus was like his father. I want you to be like your father, your supernatural father. If you are going to be only like your earthly father, you're going to sometimes not make it. Because there are some of our fathers who are very bad, who don't know anything about what we are talking about. There are some of our fathers who are not good people, who knows only the ways of darkness. So I want you to think about that. That is why you must be connected with Jesus and with the Father, so that you can have brightness, you can have some glory, you can have light, you can have shining. I want when people who are evil in your territory see you, in fact, the, the place where you live carries with it great shining, great shining. People can see where you live from afar. Why? Because there is light that is coming out of it. Like, uh, like the prophetess from Canada said to us that during this meeting, the meeting we had that completed yesterday, that she saw like a kind of Azusa about to break out. And that's what's going to happen. Nothing can stop it. And I've been praying that God use our gatherings like that to begin a revival. God has heard the sob of our hearts. And that's going to happen. And he, he is willing to take us to, to places of great shining, to places of great glory, to places of unlimited access, to anything that we want in life. Because there is one thing that I want to tell you. Before you begin to make some heavy moves, some heavy plans, you begin to, to, to want to do some heavy things for God. First of all, do ask him for unlimited provisions so that you will never fail. I don't want you, when you start anything, you go backward. When you start anything, you have to move forward. There's nothing like, um, I used to have this yesterday, today I don't have it. No, I don't want to hear it. If God makes you a millionaire, you will remain a millionaire and go to a billionaire. If you come back to come and count penny and nickels, God knows what I'll do to you. I will fight you. Because I can't stand seeing you after being there and then you are coming down to the, to the, to the, to the, no, 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 you can't come down anymore. You stay there. You stay up there. The Bible says we must be at the head at all times, at the top at all times. So don't, don't give me any excuse why you, 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 you are coming down here. I don't need you down here. When God has lifted you up, remain lifted up. Don't try to, to, to come down to where you've already passed. It's like you've gone through college and you're trying to go back to, to preschool. That's the lifestyle that I want for each and every one of you. And that happens, and that happens because you have entered into a different level of life, which is called... The, the, the life of glory, the life of brightness, the life, the life of light, the life of shining. That's where you need to be. That's what Jesus represented. And you must represent this kind of life.
of so much power, fire, brightness, and this carries with it a positive attraction. This carries with it financial abundance. This carries with it intelligence that are beyond the earth. Ability to do what people cannot do for good. It carries with it much enjoyment. Thank you for doing this for us. It makes life easy. It makes even when we work with difficult people, we overcome them very quickly. Thank you for hearing this prayer today. This is the life that we've entered. I take everyone who are listening, watching, contributing, I take them all with me into this kind of lifestyle from this day forward. We receive it. We have it. We will always pursue this lifestyle with you. Because the Bible is going to be written and it will, be, it will say that we are the exact brightness of your glory, Jesus. What you are in the Father, we are in you. Therefore, we receive it and we love it. And we thank you for it. Amen. And amen and amen. Today, I call on this life to begin to move in us. Surprise us with it. Surprise us with it. Even when we are not prepared for it, let it come to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. I will be teaching by 12 noon today. Uh, if, if I am not out of the house, then I will be teaching by 12 noon. If I am out of the house, uh, I will try and come back on time, but please, if you have the time, uh, let's assemble around 12 noon for me to, for me to continue to, to teach on the Lord's Prayer and to minister to you because it is while the teaching is going on and while the prayer is going on that revelation comes, miracles burst out and all kind of stuff. So I will see you then and in the evening, tonight by 9 p.m. is um, Millionaire 500. It will be today. And I will see you then. God bless you and God be with you. I care a lot about you and I am so, so, so grateful. I am so grateful that you, you, um, you, you and I, we enjoyed the marathon prayers of last week. You will start to see the results. Bye-bye.